everyone! So today I thought I would do a video about statistics in a psychology degree. Fun fun fun! <laughs> but I've had quite a few questions on it and I know I promised to do a video about a month ago. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to do it. I'll be honest, the idea of doing a video about statistics wasn't all that thrilling but hopefully it will be helpful for you guys and if it is I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As I said I've had quite a few questions on statistics and one question I got was from someone called Sanjeet, I think that's how you say it, and she asked what is stats and what do you need to know and I think that's a really great question. So let's start with what is stats. It basically consists of a whole load of different tests that you can use when you're running a study, like an experiment, um, and basically these statistical tests allow you to find out whether your results were significant and they produce a value which tells you how significant your results were. So obviously it might be different at different universities, I can obviously only tell you what Borough Holloway does, but I assume you learn roughly the same things at all universities. But I will just say, as a promotion for Royal Holloway, I thought the lecturers who delivered the statistics modules were fantastic. So I will show you on here, hopefully you'll be able to see it, what our lectures were like. Basically in each lecture we would be introduced to a new type of test, in this case correlation. So first of all they would kind of tell us what the test does and also when the test should be used. So in this case it can only be used for certain types of variables. They'll also try to explain why it can't be used for other situations which is here. Then, they'll usually give an example of a study so that we can apply the test to the study and then you can see how it's done. Then they'll do a step-by-step -step guide of how to work out different values. So you'll typically have a table of data and this will be sort of given to you and it's basically just what different participants scored. So you'll have this, this data right here. Then you'll need to um, work out the correlation for this study. So they give you the equation. Now don't be scared by this. I know it looks a bit weird, a bit confusing. It's really not and I don't like maths so do not worry. But it's quite simple kind of because you just need to carefully slot in the numbers for each of these things. So they'll kind of tell you how to find out say what n is, n is just sort of number of participants. So that's really easy, so you put in however many participants you had, um, I think, and then um, they'll tell you how to work out this number here. And you literally just get the numbers from this table and pop them into this equation. And then this, you, all, you just type into your calculator so it's very much sort of a step-by-step -step thing and here you'll see they just take you through each step of what you do. So, you know, 10 times 6 or 5. You know, and with a calculator that's not difficult. You just have to sort of be quite logical and do one step at a time. So eventually, once you've done all the different components of this equation, you'll come out with the number. and that is a correlation, like a number that tells you the correlation, but they'll explain that, so what does this tell us? So then on the next page they'll help you interpret it and they'll explain the result. So you use this number here to show you how strong one variable was with another and then you can also find out whether your result was significant, this is really important, they just show you everything is just really spelt out for you, you just have to follow the steps. So at Royal Holloway it's really great because you learn the theory in the lecture and then you get a chance to practice it in a workshop and then each week you have to do a short quiz, I think it's 10 questions and it, it's um, asking you about what you did in the workshop. I found them really helpful because it kind of helps to like helps you to memorise what, what you learn and it helps to make sure that you understood what you learned. In terms of the exam, again this is only Royal Holloway, 
you are allowed to take in two materials to the exam. So this is what I did, I've still got it. I produced this little notebook, which is fine, you can take that in, and I wrote all of the tests up here. I basically wrote each of the tests there and I said what it's for, then I would write the formula out. I just do a step-by-step -step guide, so it's quite easy then. There were eight stats tests, and then we also learned about general things about conducting research, sort of the different types of variables and just slightly different things that kind of look at how how well the study was run, not so much what you found but also how it was run. So you might think how do you know which test to use in which situation, um, but they do give you quite a nice um, chart. So it's less confusing and complicated than you might think. In the exam I think you're given a couple of studies and I think you're asked to say oh, which test should be used to analyse the results and why have you chosen that test and then I think you sort of do the equations and work out what the results would be using your calculator. I think that's what it was. Right, so that is first year. Second year is quite different. So second year you actually start to use a computer program called SPSS, the bane of everyone's lives, but um, basically you then do all these tests using this software. So you might think, well why do I need to learn it step by step, like working out on the calculator? And I think they do that so that you have a better understanding of what these tests involve. So it's basically like a spreadsheet, on one page you enter in um, all the data that you've collected about your participants and their results and then on the other sort of spreadsheet you enter in what test you'd like to be performed. So you still have to make the decision over which test is appropriate. It's just that the software will do all the workings out for you and produce a page of slightly confusing tables um, with all the different numbers. Again, Raw Holloway is great because in each lecture um, it's a similar structure to first year. Each lecture you learn about how to do each test in SPSS. They actually show you, they have all these like print screens of the software. So this is what SPSS looks like and they highlight what each sort of column means and here they tell you exactly what to click on. And they tell you exactly what each result means. They kind of explain what these numbers mean and what you should write to explain it. And you basically <laughs> copy these sentences, but insert, you know, whatever was relevant for your study. So in second year, again, you'll have a workshop, only in this case, you go onto computers and you are given a sort of made up study, and then you run the tests on SPSS. Then in your lab classes, you have one lab class a week, and once a term, you will do um, your own study and you do these in groups in your lab class and then you all sort of collate your results and then you go away and use SPSS and get the results then you have to write up a lab report um, which is kind of in the style of a published paper and so then in the results section you'll use your data from SPSS to explain what you found. Okay so for the exam um, I've got my little notes here, I found them. You can't um, bring any notes in but they're not going to expect you to do any of the workings out because obviously you don't have the software in the exam. So the first part you basically are asked about different tests and um, you sometimes have to explain certain components of them and say like when they can, in what situations they can be used in, what type of studies I mean. So you are asked to design a study in the next part and you kind of say what test you would use to carry out that study and sort of why you would use that test. Okay, and then the final bit of the exam is basically you're given a study and I think you're given the output of the study and you're asked to report the results in a um, s sort of in the appropriate way um, which you're taught how to do and you basically write up a results section 
um, like you would in your lab reports and sort of interpret the findings. So I think that's it for second year. So third year, you don't actually do any statistics modules. You've kind of learned basically what there is to know in first and second year. And in third year, the only kind of um, contact you'd have with any statistics is in your own um, third year project. Okay, so I think I've answered the question of what is stats and what do you need to know quite thoroughly. But now I can answer some of the other questions I've had. So a lot of you have been quite worried about it and you've said that you've only got GCSE maths, not A level. Um, is it more like A level or is GCSE maths fine? Um, I didn't have A level maths either, I'd just done it at GCSE level and I did quite, I did fairly well in it but it was definitely one of my weakest subjects. But what I would say is that I think statistics in a psychology degree is very different from GCSE maths, very very different and I wouldn't worry if you did, if you didn't do so well at GCSE maths because I just don't think they rely on the same kind of skills. I think it's a lot more about being able to follow steps and just being careful and as long as you're careful and logical then you'll be fine. So I think in a way the key is just to be patient because sometimes the SPSS program can be a bit fiddly and a bit annoying but you know you will find the answer. It's just about following the steps and looking in the right places for the output. So I hope this helps and good luck if you're going on to do a psychology degree. I'm sure you'll be fine.